Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. Time for your daily dose of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, and we're going to take on a historic World War II battle today. This is the Battle of Savo Island, sometimes known as the First Battle of Savo Island, also sometimes known as the First Battle of the Solomon Seas. And to men who were there, especially on the Allied side, they call it the Battle of the Five Sitting Ducks, which tells you a little bit about how this battle went for the Allies, not particularly well. We're going to use the, uh, the larger ships that were involved in this, which means we won't have the 15 destroyers that the United States had on their side. Uh, we're going to take in six heavy cruisers, two light cruisers on the American side, even though they weren't all necessarily just American ships. Uh, we can only choose one nation. So uh, five heavy cruisers, two light cruisers on the Japanese side. Uh, the Allies lost three heavy cruisers sunk, one heavy cruiser that was very badly damaged and later had to be scuttled. And they also lost two destroyers. A total of about 1,100 men were killed. 129 men killed on the Japanese side. Major defeat for the Americans. Um, however, in the long run, uh, this was a part of the larger battle for Guadalcanal, which did turn out to be a victory for the Allies. So we're going to see if we can turn that around. We're not going to do anything to design the ships. We're going to go with about 1935 technology, even though this was a battle that was fought in August of 1942. We're just going to take it in and see what happens. Uh, among the people who were involved uh, somewhat in this battle was a uh, Navy admiral named John S. McCain. Uh, he was the grandfather of the future United States Senator and American uh, presidential candidate, John McCain III. Uh, John McCain, Admiral McCain, was actually in charge of all of the uh, land-based air forces at this battle. So we've got the Minneapolis, the Chicago, the Scranton, the Charleston, the Chester, and the Fargo, along with Columbia and Seattle. So let's go ahead and, and figure out, I think I just saw which way he, he's over in the north. So we've got to get all the way turned around. Always fun when that has to happen. We do have numerical advantage, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have the better guns. Looks like we've got 9-inch guns on the Minneapolis. I would guess most of the others will have similar. That appears to be the case. I don't know what the Japanese will have. All right, looks like we're finally sighting them here. Uh, so let me look at these names again because I thought, did I have a Chicago? Yeah, Chicago actually was one of the ships that was involved in this battle. They were part of what was called the Southern Force because there was a Northern Force and a Southern Force and an Eastern Force uh, in this battle. They were all kind of spread out. Uh, Guadalcanal was kind of the main island to the south. Savo Island that this battle is named after was a smaller island that was kind of on the western part of the battlefield, the area where this was fought. And then Florida Island is the one to the north. And there were a bunch of allied transports. They were trying uh, throughout the Battle of Guadalcanal. Uh, one of the big struggles was trying to get supplies to the allied forces on the ground on Guadalcanal. And that's why there were these series of major naval engagements that were fought. Uh, five of them, in fact, that were all uh, pretty significant in terms of scale and in terms of importance. But like I said, the end result was an Allied victory at the end of Guadalcanal. And I, I've mentioned this before, but I had a cousin who was killed uh, at Guadalcanal. He was on board the USS Atlanta. And uh, he, was, he was a gunner's mate. And his gun position was struck uh, by a direct hit which killed him and several other men. The Atlanta, I believe, was eventually lost in that fight. So I wanna, I wanna go ahead and tighten up our formation. We're gonna go ahead and slow down. So you'll see we get that tight own spread bonus. We'll also start getting an uh, own cruise speed bonus once we, get, once we get slowed down a little bit. Got 1,400 nine inch shells. And those should be firing pretty regularly, especially once we get the others up. I don't like this. Seattle's still going full speed, so let's start kind of bringing them up alongside. Who else is following them? Anybody? Yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, we did get a 9-inch hit. He's got 11-inch guns on at least one of his ships, so that's what I was afraid of, that they would have bigger guns. 
We're not getting a tremendous amount of penetration. We're getting partial pen so far. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to high explosives for a little bit. Let's just see what they do. Since we are dealing with heavy cruisers. And we're not getting penetration with the APs anyway. We're not making a lot of damage, but you can still see he is taking some damage. There we go. get these guys up a little closer so that we've got kind of two firing lines going. And once they get up a little closer then we'll slow them down. Big one, ammo detonation. Beautiful. That's why we like the HEs. Slow this down a little bit. Nice. Got our first sinking. Beautiful. Now we've got a, a two ship advantage. Yeah, it looks like we've got, we've got one coming in. He's going to probably get a torpedo run going on it, so I'm going to at least get a few ships firing on them. Actually, we'll get that whole, this whole group firing on him. No, I don't want you to turn toward him. I want you to shoot at him. seen any torpedoes in the water yet, though we, we've put some in the water. Yeah, he's coming at me. He's going to try to get some torpedoes in the water, try and take me out that way. Nice hit. Let's see how our formation looks. Oh, we're still having trouble getting these guys caught up. Mostly because those light cruisers were set to screen so they weren't falling in behind. Just want to keep these guys kind of where they are. See how this is going. We're uh, we're getting some hits on that one. Got some good hits on the Higuro. 
Really, Minneapolis is the only one of my ships that has taken any damage, and it hasn't been real bad so far. A few more hits on the Takachiko, uh, Takachiho, and we should be able to sink that one. It's a big flaming ball right now. There's another hit on Minneapolis. He does have torpedoes in the water, so let's be careful of that. I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, Minneapolis is going to drop out of the formation because of their damage. Oh, and there's a torpedo right there. So we're just going to slightly change our formation here a little bit, our direction. Own cruise speed is getting up there now. We should probably maybe drop this a hair more. Beautiful. Takachiho is about to be out. We've also gotten some good hits on Shikuma. Kind of a gloomy day on the seas. Not what you would expect in the South Pacific. Beautiful. We'll go ahead and stick with this till we watch the sinking. Oh yeah, you know me, you know I like to watch a good sinking. one's going down stern first. Wow, that happened fast. That one went down real fast. There goes... Oh, we must have gotten a... Did we get a... No, I thought maybe we got a ammo detonation on Chikuma because that happened awful fast, but... And it wasn't the case. Alright, I think now... We can go ahead and get this group slowed down. We're just going to basically run two lines here. Although at this point we can afford to be a little more aggressive. Honestly, did not expect this to be this one-sided, especially when I saw that he had bigger guns. But in a case like this, when you're dealing with armored cruisers, and you've got the difference between 9-inch and 11-inch, and let's assume for a second that the 9-inch are better technology and a little more accurate, you're better off to have the accuracy. Because it seems like I'm hitting, I'm getting a lot more hits than he is. that and his AI is, looks like he's defaulting to armor piercing shells where I'm using HE and they seem to be having a nice effect. Uh, the whole stern was underwater there. These, uh, these heavy cruisers in this technology time period have a really low I don't know what the naval term is for it, but they just the decks sit really low off the off the surface. So kind of like a low profile. There's not you know, it reminds me of the monitor during the Civil War where you didn't have a lot to shoot at because most of it was underwater. Got an ammo detonation on Mogami.
That's his last light cruiser. And then we've just got three heavy cruisers left. Two of them have taken significant damage already. It'll be interesting when the campaign comes because obviously tactics are going to change. You're not going to have to go for wiping out an entire fleet. Now, you know, it may be that you get a couple of crucial hits, sink a couple of ships, cause some damage, keep your fleet relatively intact, and then get out of there uh, before you take unnecessary damage. Whereas on these custom battles, obviously, you're just going to wipe out the other side. Hey, we got our first torpedo hit. And then sank Megami. Let's get over there and get a look. Probably gonna sink really fast, just like the last ones did. Yep. Beautiful. Man, I'm honestly surprised at how one-sided this battle has been. This has actually worked out pretty nicely with the uh, the formation. We've got kind of a nice staggered look here. Everybody firing broadsides. Lots of hits happening all at once. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these ships to start firing on him just to finish him off. Haguro is super close to being done. There she goes. That leaves uh, Utsugi and Miko Shirani. Utsugi, I don't know how they're even firing at this point, the way their guns are pointed. Oh, we just took our first two torpedo hits. But we got Isugi in the process. That was Seattle that took those hits. That's the one problem with running my formation like this, is that it gives him an easier time hitting a target because we don't have those spaces. That's okay, though. Just one left. Get a sinking with flooding here, so maybe now's the time to go back to AP. Tough angle, the ship's going away from us. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that's doing as much damage. And we're better off to stay with high explosives. It worked on everybody else. Oh, they got their fires put out. And we started a new one. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your requests for a battle you'd like to see. It's tricky with World War II battles because so many of them involved. Oh, there's two more torpedo hits. I'm not really paying attention to that at this point. 
so many of the World War II battles, especially in the Pacific, involved aircraft carriers. Uh, so it's tricky to find ones that didn't, um, especially small engagements that involve maybe eight, ten ships at most on a side. So if you have a suggestion that I have not yet taken on, then let me know. I'd be glad to do that. Or if you just have a hypothetical type of battle that you'd like to suggest, use that comment section below. I'm always looking for ideas while we uh, patiently await a campaign. Man, the last one doesn't want to die. I mean, we are getting a little more, uh, more distance now. Finish him. We'll speed things up. Not as much pen penetration once you get at this distance. There we go. Maybe we'll switch some of them to AP. Get a mix going here. Probably makes sense to just try to close the distance a little bit. Shells raining down, just trying to get one guy. Yeah, we'll start closing the distance, see if that helps. I'm coming after you now, buddy. Gotta have taken enough damage that it can't be moving that fast at this point. See, they, they got the flooding dealt with a little bit. Pumps must be working overtime. My goodness. As fast as we sank everybody else. All right, I've scored about 30 more hits since I stopped recording, and we're finally about to sink this one just been hit after hit and, and closing the distance finally started getting me some better damage numbers just weren't getting the penetration we needed you can see there's still we had 216 completely blocked but a majority of them did get at least some form of penetration don't forget to drop a like and if you haven't already subscribe uh, those things certainly help the channel a lot and I really appreciate them Looks like we're gonna just about finish this guy off. I can't even believe he's really moving at this point. Let's see what the distance is. We're down to eight kilometers. We were at about 14 when I started turning toward him. If you're new to the channel, I say him a lot. I recognize that ships, for the most part, were she or her. It's just something I do when I play these games. I call the enemy him. I just do that. I understand that that's not what you would have called a ship in most cases. One. So many hits. Just doesn't want to die. Still at 5%, my goodness. Problem is at this point, we were hitting some of the same things over and over again, so the damage is kind of redundant. We're getting a lot more hits now, you can see as we get closer, down to 6 kilometers. Any minute. 
There we go. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon.